So I'm going to skip through a lot of different things. We only have, as Dr. McIntyre said, about an hour, maybe even less now. So I'm going to skip through a lot of stuff. Dr. McIntyre will make these slides available, so you can download them and look at them. I, I talk about a lot of issues that we won't get into today, but they're all in that. Um, as Dr. McIntyre said, the first thing we need to understand is that China is different. But how is China different? And how do I develop, as a business person, how do I develop a mindset and framework to actually work with the culture and norms that are different? Right? A lot of people just make assumptions and say, oh, you know, Chinese people, they all, they don't care about the environment, and there's a lot of corruption. But, you know, that's all from a point of view. Uh, we have to understand, how do we, um, how do we maximize what we get out of it? both personally and professionally, when we interact with Chinese cultures, how do we maximize it? And when you have a cultural context, I think you will have a better success at maximizing it. So that's the goal there. And the first thing is, we were trying to get the PowerPoint presentation loaded, because I didn't put it on USB drive. Fortunately, I was able to download it from my Mac drive. But if I'm meeting all of you for the first time, this is kind of like a faux pas. It means that I'm trying to get to know you with the formal presentation. But in Chinese culture, we should be going out to dinner and just talking. And Everything in China starts with trust. So if I'm up here with a suit and tie and I'm giving a formal presentation telling you about why you need to do things a certain way, that really doesn't work. So you'll see me walking around, you'll see me try to be more interactive. Uh, this is an MBA class, so I guess I have to have a presentation, so that's why. <laughs> Alright, so this is the cultural framework. You've heard a lot of these terms before, but what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to understand how these terms apply to your mindset when you are talking to somebody from China. It could be your coworker who's overseas. And if you work for a company like Motorola, they have design centers all throughout China. They have manufacturing facilities in China. A lot of their ODMs are in China. So you, ultimately, you have to interact with a lot of people in China. And these are terms that you hear a lot. There are a lot, a lot of them are buzzwords. Uh, but I'm going to tell you why they're important. Everything about doing business in China revolves around Wang Xi. I think everybody has probably heard that term before. It really just means that you cannot do anything in China without understanding the significance of relationships, personal relationships. And how do you cultivate and develop personal relationships without getting yourself in trouble? Well, that's, you have to first of all, I say Wang Xi is the engine that drives relationships with people in China. Well, there's business for and then the foundation is the values. So you also have to understand Chinese values. They're different than American values. They're different than Southern values. They're different than Canadian values. Um, trust is the key to any successful business relationship. I don't think it has to be China to know that trust is very important. But we have to understand, well, how do you actually develop trust in a Chinese context? And then, of course, face. You hear this a lot. Losing face, preserving face causing other people to lose face. Understanding this concept of mian zi is also very, very important in making this engine run. And basically, this will be the cultural framework. And, and some of these other terms are things that we're going to highlight throughout this discussion, but I don't want it to be a focus on terms and definitions. It should really be on experiences that you can apply when you engage Chinese people or Chinese companies in some type of uh, business or personal discussion. Okay, so this is the cultural context. We know that China is different, but we're, we're also going to talk about today, how is China different? Okay, so the main thing is, well, China, Chinese people have different perceptions, um, they have different beliefs, they have different values. Okay. So what happens is, you put this into a context of, well, I'm trying to do business with somebody with a Chinese mindset and point of view. Okay, all of this shapes the Chinese business and cultural norms and is directly reflected in their strategies and tactics, which you may read about in the Art of War for Strategic Development or whatever. Right? Art of War, 3,000 years old, now is uh, you know now it's been translated into a business text. That's kind of strange, isn't it? War for business? I guess it makes some sense. And of course, what we receive on our end, uh, we filter through our own perceptions or misperceptions. And that will trigger our reactions. 
So what we want to do is we want to try to react to situations that maximize relationship with you. Why maximize goodwill, trust, and reciprocity. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. So how does this Y2 engine work? Okay, well, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. You'll have the slides. There's a lot of cultural influences. And you know, China's got a 5,000 year old history. Uh, China is changing very fast. It's very uh, non-homogeneous. Okay. Uh, you know, in China, there are actually different classes of citizens. Does anybody know that? You know, there are still peasants and city dwellers. This sounds like something out of the 15th century, but they actually have a different class status in China. They have different access to insurance, different access to minimum wage, different access to public services. This is China. So there are two types of population. There's just, just politically, there are peasants and there are city workers. So China is not uh, homogeneous as we would think. 1.4 billion Chinese people, what a big market. Well, it's actually dozens and dozens of different markets. They all have their uh, unique dichotomies and but certain principles that are quote unquote Chinese are applicable across all of them. And that's the framework that we're trying to uh, we're trying to discuss today. Okay, so Guanxi is the first one. Okay, so as I said, Guanxi is basically what we would think of as relationships. So you want to think about I don't know if any of you were in a fraternity or a sorority. Okay. Well, you have frat bros or you have uh, sisters. <laughs> that's a different type of relationship. Because there's an added level of trust there. Okay. I can always trust my front row to have my back. So if I want to do business, it would be good if I could do somebody who's uh, from the same fraternity. It doesn't even matter if I knew him or not, as long as he's whatever, alpha, beta, gamma, or whatever. So that's a type of uh, analogy, because there's many different levels of one sheet, and we'll get into that. Um, Guanxi is also about uh, what, what Confucius, you know, everybody's heard of Confucius, but how does Confucius apply in Chinese culture and how does it apply in business culture? And a lot of things that we may say, when you actually go to China, you say, man, that doesn't sound right. Because I'm going to tell you that Chinese people think in terms of preserving harmony. That means we don't want to create conflict, we want to figure out how we best can work together, but then when you're Negotiating with people in China, you're thinking, man, you're looking for a fight. So there's a lot of contradictions, and, and you just have to put those all into context and try to understand what my goal is. And then you have to understand that with doing business in China, you have to always have a long-term perspective. And we'll get into examples of why and how that's important as we move forward. Okay, so again, a lot of slides from the books that I read. A lot of key quotations that are in here. I'm not going to go through them all. You can read them when you down there. So the basic principles of personal relationships. I mean, we don't have to use that Chinese word, don't you? Just think about the relationships that you have with your family, with your cousins, with your fraternity or sorority brothers, with your classmates, your childhood friends, new acquaintances at, at work. They're all a different level of relationship. So there's a different level of trust. And there's a different level of goodwill that you can expect. Right? So there's a lot of, we're, we'll talk about, Guanxi is almost like a, a bank account. And, and you, you, you accrue these goodwill points by doing something nice. So for instance, if I come and become a guest speaker for Dr. McIntyre, I've kind of earned a little bit of credit in my goodwill bank account. So in the future when I need a positive reference for a new job and say, hey, Dr. McIntyre, can you do that? And then he will naturally think, well, yes, I will give you a good reference. And it's not that something that you actually track in Excel spreadsheet, but it does accumulate. <laughs> it does accumulate and it does get spent over time. Okay. Uh, patience is also very important. We'll talk about patience and how the Chinese concept of time is different than most Western mindset. So this is a, when you talk to Chinese people, they will talk about these kind of